Hi, I'm Andrew Wasson. Thanks for tuning in once again to another edition of my guitar blog. It is Sunday, October 23rd, 2011. And this time around, we're going to head over to Tim out in Staten Island, New York. He wrote in saying, I recently read about a concept called ladder licks on a guitar discussion forum, but nobody there really discussed exactly what they are. So I was wondering and hoping if maybe you'd heard of ladder licks, and if you did hear of these, if you could maybe explain what they are. Well, thanks for writing in, Tim. You know, the term ladder licks can be explained as an effect of basically going outside the melodic and harmonic structure of a key that a chord progression is from. So think of it this way. To go from one stable idea over to another by way of, uh, you might as well say, a detour from the concentrated notes of the key center. Now, whenever one of these ladder licks are applied, they always appear with one common trait, and that is they have very little melodic value. Uh, instead, what they do is literally stop the listener in their tracks and have them think something to the effect of, uh, you know, whoa, what the heck was that? <laughs> now, you've heard these things in uh, bands like Pantera and some of the Shred stuff, but uh, you'll also catch them in, you know, fusion tunes, some of the jazz guys using them. And what I'd like to do is just zoom in on the neck and look at this a little bit further, go over some common points about the whole concept of ladder licks. Well, when it comes to these ladder lick ideas, you know, some common points that I think are important to consider uh, with ladder licks, uh, much the same this kind of points that you'd have with any type of uh, outside idea that you'd work with. I, I wanted to break it down, though, to three main points. Uh, the first being that the ladder lick does not really relate to the notes of the key that you're in. I mean, you might have a couple of overlap notes. Let's say if I'm in A major, uh, you got your A major uh, tones. Uh, you're going to have a ton of notes in your ladder lick that really don't relate to the key of A major whatsoever in that particular example. So uh, that's the idea. Is you'll have a whack of notes in there that do not relate to the key that you're in. Now, number two, uh, these ladder lick ideas are primarily fingering patterns. So you basically apply them as modular or geometrical ideas upon the fingerboard. Let's say if that was your idea. It has nothing really to do so much with uh, you know any kind of proper scale shape you know out of a pentatonic or out of a full scale or mode it's more or less just a, a modular geometrical concept that you plunk down on the fingerboard and then you're just moving it either uh, you know somewhat vertically or horizontally uh, however you know or linear along the neck it's just uh, whatever uh, it transfers you over to the next position possibly on the fingerboard that you think is uh, accurate for the next idea that you want to start messing around with now the third thing I want to bring up is um, they are to be basically performed with total confidence you know you, don't, you want to be very determined when you play these uh, outside uh, ladder lick ideas because um, you know if you don't uh, they're just gonna sound like a bunch of really wrong notes and people are just gonna think that you're a lousy guitarist uh, instead of you know some kind of hip outside uh, player so uh, with uh, those points out of the way and the discussion out of the way I want to play the uh, ladder lick that I came up with here for the uh, for the video blog um, it's centered around like an a, a seventh kind of sound And it goes like this. Okay, I'll slow that down a little bit. And notice how it started on A. And then we're sort of walking into that uh, chromatic uh, string cross idea. And then it went uh, into a B, which is a, a ninth chord tone. And I did start with that up here. So I had that as a thought. Then when the second part came in, uh, we came off E, which is the fifth of A. And in the end, when the thing wrapped up, it ended up on a G note. So that's the flat seven tone of that A dominant seventh. So uh, there's starting and ending points, uh, but all the stuff in between is just uh, a bunch of really outside uh, or chromatic-based concept that you mess around with. So uh, there you go. There's my ladder lick example. And I hope that this explanation helps uh, not only Tim, but a lot of other people out there. And once again, that's about all the time I have for today. So thanks for watching. Have yourself a great week, and I'll catch up with you next time. Bye for now.